already out the bat, it looks like we've got some serious contenders for Drag Race. And yet again, we've always got a couple of people who seem like they're just not ready. But let's talk about it. Hey, what's up? I'm JD Nerd, and this is going to be my recap, my reaction, my review for RuPaul's Drag Race Season 11, Episode 2. Uh, the queens are returning to the workroom, and they're throwing shade. They're reading Soju about her cyst and just really, you know, being a little bit of TMI, too much information, revealing a bit too much of oneself, if you will. And they're doing, they're doing what queens do. They're reading, they're roasting, they're gagging. And Miss Scarlet Envy decides to, you know, insert herself into the conversation because it always has to be about Scarlet Envy. Uh, she really enjoys attention. She truly enjoys People, she just enjoys a lot of things if it concerns her. She got clocked for having holes in her dress and it kind of got her right together. And I think they were right to do so. I don't dislike Scarlet Envy, but I did get a good kiki and a good chuckle when they kind of clocked her about them holes in her dress. So we go on to the mini challenge and the mini challenge is a photo bomb. You know, every so often, every every other season or so, uh, RuPaul had the girls do this little thing where they're photobombing, you know, celebrities. They do a little green screen thing, whatever. They take the picture and then they Photoshop it. They make it look like they photobombing it. There really wasn't too much going on here. I don't even want to talk about it. Y'all saw it. I saw it. We saw all of it. And we ain't even going to talk about it. So we're going to move on and sashay away from that. And the main challenge is an acting challenge. And she's going to have the girls split up into two groups. And what she's doing is she's going to have Team Silky and she'll have Team Brooklyn. Team Silky consists of Silky Ganache, Kahana Montrese, Evie Oddly, Vanessa Vanji Mateo, Mercedes Iman Diamond, Akira Davenport, and lastly, Scarlet Envy. Scarlet Envy was the last queen chosen. Nobody wanted her on their team. That was kind of sad or messed up or whatever, but... You kind of, I kind of stand off because you really can't expect people to want to be all up around you when you're giving Ice Queen all the time. Team Brooklyn consisted of Brooklyn Heights, Nina West, Raja O'Hare, Plastic Tiara, Ariel Versace, Honey Davenport, and Old Leatherface, a.k.a. Miss Sugar Cane. This week, they're doing two movies. One is um, Good God, Get a Girl Grip. Again, another one is Why I Gotta Be Black Panther. They're doing the rehearsals. It's, it's the typical shenanigans. We're not going to waste too much time talking about what they did in terms of getting ready. They always foreshadow it. One team looks like they're a hot mess, and then the other team looks like they got it together. So we'll talk about the acting challenges when we get to the main part of the recap. But it really wasn't too much going on there. It was shade. It was some cattiness. People didn't know their lines. People was feeling whatever, whatever, some type of way, whatever, whatever. It's the typical drag race stuff, filler material, if you will, till we get to the good parts. Whenever she's, the, the queens are getting ready for the week's maxi challenge, Rue will come in and she'll do a walkthrough and she'll talk to each queen and not necessarily give them advice or tips, but it's like a mentor type thing. And it's like, okay, well, what do you think you should do? And it's more like just guiding them to make the best decision, to best represent what they want to do on the show for that particular week. So when Rue was there talking to the girls, you know, Rue was able to stir the pot herself and was like, well, who's problematic? Because she knows that Silky Ganache is this big personality. She knows that. And and, and of course, Miss Ariel Versace, even though I couldn't barely say her name earlier, I could say it now. Miss Ariel Versace was like, well, you know, it's silky. You know, I feel like she has a strong personality. And I wonder how will that apply in a leadership position? And how does that going to work with that group and her leading that team? So in fairness, I will say that she did say that. So it wasn't like she just came out and said, oh, to hell with Silky Ganache. But you could definitely see that there was some frustration attached to it and then the other queens were quick quick to co-sign as people tend to do so Ruth stirred that up and and, and got a good key key and basically word got out silky ganache is feeling some type of way about it basically evie oddly does what the vixen did back on season 10 when aquaria and miss cracker had their whole little back and forth thing and aquaria is trying to say that miss cracker was copying her and her makeup and her look and all this stuff like that and and the vixen was like well this is what you said. It was kind of similar to that. And she was like, look, y'all had all this energy talking about Silky Ganache and y'all saying this, that, and the third, but now y'all don't want to say anything. So y'all had the strength and y'all had the courage to say it to Mother Rue. Why y'all can't say it now? Confront her now. And it's interesting because 
Nina West, I can tell she's not about drama. She's not with the, you know, she's not with that. You can tell she's not like messy like that. She's a comedy queen. She's been doing pageants and stuff like that. She's been in the game for a minute. And of course, everybody reads, everybody throws shade, but I don't think she's really like down for this gutter stuff. So even though she's making these faces and things like that, she ain't saying nothing. She's like, I ain't really trying to get involved in that. And Evie Ali was just like, look, if y'all got something y'all need to say, y'all need to just come out and say it. Bam, that's what it is. Miss Raja O'Hare starts feeling some type of way. And if you watch this exchange and if you watch this back and forth that's about to happen between Evie Otley and Raja O'Hara, it made me think about Sharon Needles and Fifi O'Hara because Sharon Needles was this weird, eccentric, you know, gothy, spooky, you know, queen and, and misunderstood. And Fifi O'Hara was traditional, pretty pageant. And they just, they were just not going, they, they didn't mix. Watching that argument and watching how Miss Roger was like, look, I'm about to pop off. Now she looks all pretty and big old eyes and whatever, but apparently she's about that life. And she was about to let um Miss Evie Otley know, look, I'll bash you. We can go outside. We can do this right now. That's the energy that I got. She looked like she one of them girls at the club that, oh, it's about 15 or 20 of her friends and they're about to come out the U-Haul and yes, girl, what's up? So let's get to the runway looks because again, we have a whole lot of queens that we're going to get through the runway looks and then we can kind of give our critiques and get to the lip sync and all that good stuff. So basically, Mother Rue comes out and I like this look. And I liked it even more as she came up close. So when she did her close-up, as the closer she got, I saw the lights and the sparkles and how things were little small cutouts. It was so strategic. Much better than the lampshade. It was much better than that shower cap she had last. I don't know what was up. I don't know if she'd be feeling bloated sometimes. And she just decided, I don't feel like cinching. I don't feel like tucking. I just want something loose. I don't want no silhouette. I don't know, but I, I enjoyed this look on Rue. It was really nice. Um, Brooklyn Heights came out. Um, the, the, um, the category is what's your sign? So they're supposed to be coming out of these looks. They represent their Zodiac sign. So Brooklyn Heights comes out. She's doing Pisces. And to me, she's given the Cameron Michaels of this season. Let me know what y'all think about that. Um, Plastic Tiara, always gorgeous. Always clean and polished. Again, a, a beautiful look. Makeup is beautiful and flawless. Everything is together, tailored, neat, pow, clean, Jess. And again, a, a, a separate look. Not something that's just a traditional Miss Universe, Miss, you know, uh, Vietnam, Vietnamese or whatever. Just another beautifully polished look. I'm really liking Plastic Tiara. She's bringing it for me. Raja O'Hare was giving us Capricorn and she gave us Nina Bonita Brown tees to me. You get what I'm saying with the creative painting and, and, and like a character and telling a story. And again, her eyes are like her selling point. She has the big old eyes and she really uses them when she paints and when she does her drag. I really like that. Nina West, she was doing Leo. And I feel like for her look, because I get she's a comedy queen, so I'm not going to be judging her based on like beauty standards. But I'm, I, I know she does comedy. I know she's camp. I think that if she just had bigger hair, it would have made the silhouette work. It would have made the look work and it would have tied into the lion, you know, the, the mane of the lion. You get what I'm saying? Because Honey Davenport came out right after her doing Leo and she had huge hair. And I'm thinking, yeah, that's what you should have did, Nina West, but just had bigger hair. But see, she was given this lion, but that the dot on her nose, it kind of made me think about Michael Jackson's scarecrow from The Wiz, the way they had that their Reese's peanut butter cup on his nose. That's the only thing because everything else about it, I actually really liked. It was really cool. It's not going to be too many reads, not too much shade this week, y'all. I went back and I watched the recap from last week. I was like, well, I read, I read everybody. So I don't want to read everybody, but um, I was feeling that. I feel like if Nina West would just would have had a little bit, her hair was bigger, I think the look would have really came together. So I think she's getting close. Miss Sugar Cane, hey, what's up? Um, giving us Scorpio, serving us more Leatherface. Um, Ariel Versace was giving us pretty, it was pretty, but it was boring. Like it wasn't anything that was like, you know, you know how sometimes you get a, it, it makes your jaw drop. I was like, wow, very pretty. Very pretty. Miss Silky Ganache, Capricorn, no ma'am. Um, your, your personality and, and, and the way that you garner attention speaks for themselves. Your face is always beat. You always find a way to get a beauty, a beauty beat. You do that, but I didn't like the look. I didn't like it. Evie Otley, very Boulay Brothers. This look, 
the way that in your vibe it will be perfect for Dragula. And shout out to Maddie Rance. Um, he's one of my other favorite YouTubers. He does drag race um recaps, reviews, um, and other things. He does his lives and other nerd culture and things. I've been watching him for a while. He's dope. Um, he, James Caldwell, uh, Maddie Rance, um, uh, Alexander Rogers, they do drag race recaps. I love, I live, big inspiration. So shout out to all three of them. But Boule Brothers, when I saw the look. And just thinking about Evie Otley's style and vibe and everything like that. I'm thinking, yeah, yeah, she'd be perfect for Dracula. But I think it's real cool that she's going to be on Drag Race on, on something mainstream like this. Because it's it's cool to see something else in drag that's not traditional like that. You get what I'm saying? And I really felt like this week's look, I was really liking it. It was different. It was out of the box. I was here for it. Vanessa, Vanjie, Mateo, she gave us a look. She gave us a look. And from first week to second week, I'm saying, okay, again, small body of work, but I'm thinking, okay, maybe you're serving us looks because the personality you got there, you don't even got to try it. It just comes out. But if you actually can bring us a look or two along the way, we don't be surprised if she makes it in the top four and it's not just because she was just moved along. She might earn her spot. Don't be surprised. Miss Mercedes, Iman, uh, Miss Mercedes. She was doing Sagittarius, very bright. And then I missed somebody before I got to miss Mercedes. And it was Akira Davenport, Pisces. It was really good pageant drag. Really good pageant drag. She's always going to give you a good body, some good hips, some good old ass. And it was really good pageant drag. Let me see. Miss Kahana uh, Montrese did Aries. And I wrote R.I.P. Rest in peace. R.I.P. Because her dress ripped. Once that ripped, I felt like so did her chances <laughs> of doing anything in this competition. I wasn't feeling it. Miss Scarlet Envy. I got to say something, y'all. This is going to be a little bit longer than my normal recaps. I apologize. But Miss Scarlet Envy, when your face on, flush on, yes, you're pretty. I'll give you that. Certain angles, it's a little bit harsh. We've already determined or deduced that, or we've already talked about they're giving us Jessica Lang. I'm saying you're giving me Jessica Lang. That's what that is. But I never understand what it is with these queens that want to serve body. They want to be naked. They want to come out their clothes. They want to peel out their clothes. And they ain't got no body. Now, Trinity the Tuck, at least when she would show body and come out and peel and do all that and roll around and stuff, she had some body. She, whatever means she went about to get it, there was some jiggle and there was some movement. There was some body, some curves, some something. You can't be serving me Jiminy Cricket realness and thinking that you slaying body. You're not going to win anybody's body category at any ball. At, no, ma'am. No, ma'am, Pam. I'm sorry. I just had to say that. I'm not I'm not really going in on Scarlet Envy in a negative way. I'm just saying, girl, you can't serve body without body. That's, that's all I'm saying. We need to talk about the teams. And basically what I'm going to say is Team Brooklyn... They did really well. And actually, Nina West did well. You can see that she's comfortable performing. So for me, the standout on Team Brooklyn was Nina. She did very well. She she She's funny. She knows how to play to the camera. I could see the camp, but it wasn't over. It, I was like, okay, Nina West, I, I see. I see that you're, you're rebounding quite nicely from week one. So shout out. Shout out to Nina West. Team Silky, girl, hot mess. Top two queens. The top queens are Scarlet. And Evie Otley, because they did very well and on the team, because basically Team Silky was a mess. They saved it. So they're the top two queens. The bottom queens are going to be Mercedes and, again, Miss Kahana Montrese. Song for this week's lip sync is going to be Britney's Work Bitch. Um, it's a bop. I enjoy it. I like the that 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 pulsing bass line. And it, it's, it's, it's a mover. And we've already seen that Miss Kahana likes to flip and twirl and spin and two step shuffle, you know, dun, you know, dun, 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 you know, and all that. And she flips and heels and flicks the hair and and you know, it's that very exaggerated sideway to sideway to sideways, and then we get come, you know, that that, you know, performance. It's energetic. And we were really interested to see what Mercedes would do because she was struggling struggling this 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 episode with her confidence struggling with dealing with what happened with her when she had her stroke and was in, you know just being you know embarrassed and she just wasn't feeling beautiful and pretty and just she felt compromised but i'm gonna tell you something typically she's over the highlight and she's too bright it's like the lights are on but then ain't nobody in there ain't nothing behind there but i'm telling you this i don't know what happened but the lights came on and somebody was up in there because she slayed 
this lip sync. Remember Trinity K. Bonet? And remember how she became a lip sync assassin for that season and she was slaying and sending the girls home? She was struggling with her confidence. But when the lights came on, it was time to lip sync for your life. Trinity K. Bonet was not to be played with. And I felt like Mercedes, I don't know where all that came from, all that zhush, as Miss Jasmine Masters would say. She it came from somewhere and it came out and she did well and she was she was right to win this lip sync and they sent Miss Kahana Montrese home and I feel like she like somebody I think one of the judges said um she's just not ready so maybe she needs more time maybe the exposure get her some more bookings some more gigs she get a little bit more money so she can get some things and get some looks get some designers you know she could show us this this hip hop show girl that she kept talking about because I, I kind of want to get the concept. You know what I'm saying? She's likable. And I'll give y'all one quick thing before I go. Her her as a boy, when you, when you, yeah. um Yeah, it's all good. It's all good. That's a bit of all right. But yeah, that was pretty much the lip sync. Mercedes slayed it. It was a good lip sync. But I got to call out something before I wrap this up. I got to call something out. And I gotta, find, I gotta ask, where are the knockers? Where are they? I understand that when you got these skinny queens and they're pulling off certain looks and it's androgyny and yeah, yeah, yeah. But if a lot of y'all are pulling off female illusion, most women, most females have breasts. And I'm not understanding why we keep we seeing week after week after week going back to Daniel and near All Stars three, no titties. No breasts, no knockers. I'm, I'm going to piggyback off what James Caldwell said. No knockers. So where are the knockers? You coming out here, spraying glitter on your chest. There's no breath. There's nothing. You ain't got no breastplate. You ain't got nothing. And I understand, but it's like, what's wrong with just throwing, uh, just, just throwing, just showing us a little bit of cleavage every now and again, cleavage. Show us something. Give us some knockers. I want to see some knockers. I, I know this is already taped, but if they pick up Drag Race for a, a 13th season or we get an All-Stars 5, give us some knockers. We want to see some knockers, but I want to know what y'all thought of the episode. I thought it was good. I thought I, it was very entertaining. I thought that we got a chance to see some early contenders. Plastic Tiara is stunning and, and beautiful, but she's bringing it. She's bringing it. And I'm thinking that Vanessa Vanjie Mateo is at least proving... That she's she she's worth the second chance and she's doing what she needs to do. But put everything in the comment section below. Your favorite queen, favorite look, all that. I want to know what all of y'all have to say. If you can, please throw a like on the video. Subscribe and share. It's greatly appreciated. I'm Jaded Nerd. I'll talk to y'all next time.